Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and this is the sixth episode of Our Brockton, the television show that I want to thank Brockton Community Access for uh, producing this. Uh, the whole basis of Our Brockton is, is what the title is. It's Our Brockton. It's our community. It's our city. And in prior, um, prior shows, of course, I've introduced you to other department heads. Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus. And as I speak to you now, we've lost 288 residents because of this deadly virus, and over uh, 4,800 is the total case of, of cases, over 100 active current cases right now. And today, it's, it's really my honor and my privilege to introduce to you the new executive director of the Brockton um, Health Department. And our Board of Health is, is led by uh, Dr. Eno Mondesur. Dr. Mondesur, how are you today? Very well, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Sullivan. How are you today? I'm it's excellent. great to, to be here with you and uh, greetings to all the residents of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Mondesur. I want to take this opportunity because, um, uh, you know, as you know, I took office on January 6th. And at that time, uh, the Board of Health was in flux. Uh, the health department, which is vital, uh, you know, had someone that was filling in because Mr. Tataglia had passed away. And then uh, we started seeing the pandemic, the coronavirus coming to the community. So uh, at that time, John McGarry, registered nurse, stepped in to fill in and he did a wonderful job. And then uh, he stepped away and Linda Cahill stepped in. And Linda, of course, is director of, of school nursing for Brockton Public Schools. So um, I want to thank both of those individuals for the dedication. But I knew that we needed to hire someone permanently that could fill that role. And Dr. Montessor applied. And without question, unanimously, we said this is the right fit. Um, I'll let you uh, right now, Eno, um, just give some background information, which would be helpful to the viewers. Well, thank you, Mayor. And again, um, hello to all the residents of Brockton. Uh, as Mayor Sullivan uh, stated, my name is Eno Montessor, and uh, I am the new head of the uh, Board of Health for the city of Brockton. Before arriving to the uh, Board of Health here. I have worked for 15 years for the uh, City of Boston, City of Boston uh, Infectious Disease Department. Uh, I dealt um, very uh, significantly with um, HIV and AIDS and other diseases as well. Uh, we got called to the airport um, uh, on occasions also because of some outbreak um, around the area. And I also work for the um, Catholic Charities um, slash Haitian Multi-Service Center directing the HIV AIDS program also, mm -hmm. uh, the whole uh, uh, program. And then I also um, teach. I'm a faculty at Roxbury Community College mm -hmm. where I have uh, taught from September 1999 uh, to date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a history there. And uh, also I uh, pastor a church. Um, it's in Cambridge, but I also preside over the Association of the Haitian Pastors of Brockton and uh, Southern uh, Massachusetts. So uh, basically, I love science, but also I'm, I love, um, I'm a man of faith. And uh, I would to um, make sure that not only the, the, the soul is healthy, but also the body is healthy. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, that's one thing you've always stressed to me, Dr. Montessor. And again, uh, I just want the viewers to know you have a master's uh, in public health degree from Boston University, which is just a wonderful institution. So, um, you know, you, you came in, um, and, and really I wanna applaud you, you came into uh, an, a, a really an environment uh, where we've had significant loss of life, significant sick people, it continues here. Even though we're not in the red classification, but we're in yellow, um, and that's good, but mm -hmm. we wanna be in green, and then our ultimate goal is to have a safe, healthy community with zero cases in the city of Brockton. We're not there yet. So I'd like to get your opinion, Dr. Montessor, on what do you think and what would you like to tell the viewers, like what do we need to do as Brockton residents to control our healthy environment? Well, we all have a part to play. You, you, we can look at it as a stage where we are all players, and so we come at our, at our specific time, but everyone has a role to play because uh, this virus does not discriminate, irrespective of age, irrespective of ethnicity or demographic, mm -hmm. irrespective of um, sex, um, religious affiliation, or even political conviction. You can be a Democrat, you can be, right. you can be a Republican, you can be an independent or uh, rainbow or whatever. Uh, so 
the part that we all have to play is uh, to look at the protocol and use it um, stepwise, because um, I have to really applaud, um, I applaud you, Mayor, Thank for you. the city, what you're doing, Thank but you. I also have to applaud uh, Governor Baker and uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito, because they have uh, in place a good plan, and it works. And so, therefore, there are steps. For instance, here we are um, relating to the public, to the um, uh, constituents here. We wear a mask. That's right. And so, therefore, it is important that when you're going out, you wear your mask. Uh, you never know who you will meet, and you don't know the health status of the individual you're going to meet. And so, therefore, it is important. I cannot emphasize that enough. It is important that we play our part. Um, and wash our hands, that continues to be an emphasis, and also um, the social distancing, that must be part mm -hmm. of it. And uh, I know by Monday, um, October 5th, there is a new phase, uh, step uh, two, in phase three, that the governor has um, uh, released, uh, has done a press release uh, just Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So people are looking to go out to try to have fun. And uh, so the numbers of people who can congregate indoor and outdoor, he has revisited that and that's going to increase a little bit, but that doesn't mean that we have to go out without precautions. So all the um, other techniques or the protocols that we have used before, we have to use them even going into um, step two in phase three. Absolutely, and the mask wearing, we know, we know from a health standard, it, 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 it helps prevent the person wearing the mask and anybody that you're in contact with. And also the, the physical social distancing, six feet or greater, uh, we know these things. Now, one thing that we're doing and one thing that I'm doing as mayor is I'm keeping a curfew in place. And a lot of people are upset by it, but let me just be clear about it. Um, we were in a red classification. At one point, we were up to 9.5. I then reinstituted the curfew, and we're seeing progress. We're in a yellow now. We're in a yellow. Yes, we are. Um, yesterday, when the numbers came out, a lot of other municipalities spiked up to the red classification. Out of the top 10, top 10 locations with the highest concentration of numbers, we're the only yellow. Eight others are in red. And then the neighboring uh, town of Randolph is now in green. So we're doing something right. And one of the things we're doing right is your leadership at the Board of Health. Now, some people really don't know what Board of Health means, Dr. Montessori. Some people think it's just relying on health issues such as COVID. But as you know now, mm. since you're in that position, it's multifaceted. What are some of the, you have great people that work for you. What are some of the things that Board of Health deals with? That's a great question. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Board of Health covers everything that has to do with health. Uh, and we're not talking about people not having a mask for COVID or not uh, having, um, taking precautions for tuberculosis or um, people who may be sick going to a hospital for cancer. Uh, because first of all, this building that we sit in right now, it has to be maintained. So we talk about uh, san sanitation. Mm -hmm. So the, the buildings, the places have to be clean. That falls under the, the uh, Department of Health. Um, disposal, waste disposal, uh, they have to be managed in a certain way so that people don't get sick with them. The water that we're drinking. Um, the building inspection, so which means that um, we have, uh, the, the Board of Health has inspectors that go out to make sure that the buildings are following the proper uh, ordinances and they are up to code. And so there is a lot to do. For instance, um, certain places where a garage may be located. Um, th this is the issue between uh, residential and commercial. Yes. So a business should not be in a place where people reside because there's two separate ordinances. And so which means that uh, depending on the business, it may not it may not threaten the health of the, um, the residents, but it could, it depends. Let's say you have a garage within a, a, a residential area. You have carbon um, monoxide um, being spread in the air. That's very dangerous. That's a very dangerous gas. So yeah. there's a lot that of the um, Board of Health um, uh, oversees. I think, I think what was um, 
new to me, and I was a city council for 14 years, is, is how the inspectors do. Some inspect outsides of buildings, some go into restaurants, some go into grocery stores. Again, the whole intent, and you lead this, you lead this, you're the leader of the Board of Health. Um, the intent is to make sure Thanks that- Thanks to you. It's, well, no, thank you, <laughs> thank you. It's to be a healthy community. You keep saying that, and I applaud you, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. We need to have a healthy community. So, at some point, Dr. Monaster, we're gonna get past COVID. We don't know when that will be, we don't know what it means, but what's coming down the line is the flu. Right, the flu comes in every oh, yes. fall, every winter. What are some preparations that you're doing and your staff is doing? And right now you only have one health nurse, but we're looking to hire two additional health nurses. So if you're a nurse and you're watching this and you wanna be considered, please go on the City of Brockton website, the Board of Health. Um, they are actively looking to hire two registered nurses and one will be geared towards doing ethnic data collection as well. So that's my plug, thank you, thank you. But <laughs> to get back to Dr. Montessor, what are some of the endeavors you're doing to think about the flu and then going into the winter months? Well, all of us, again, have to prepare and we have a role to play. The city is making, trying to make sure that everyone is aware that um, um, COVID is not over. But at the same time, we have to let people know that it's going, this year is going to be a little bit more dangerous, a little bit more difficult because at some point we're going to have regular uh, flu season, uh, so there would be, we don't know how many strains of mm. flu we will have because every year we are introduced to one or two new strains, right. meaning that people have to be vaccinated. So yes, we don't have vaccine for COVID, but we have vaccines for uh, most of the common flu that we already know. And so therefore, we encourage everyone to, to get vaccinated. I already took my vaccine mm. uh, over two weeks ago. And uh, so therefore, some people may say, well, I'm not exposed to um, uh, people who may be um, uh, susceptible, but it doesn't matter because you don't know when you might be exposed to someone. And given that there are uh, many other um, uh, threats, uh, COVID and other things. So it is best that we all get vaccinated in order to be able to make sure that um, at least if we uh, were to be exposed to uh, another flu and then God forbid we, it's combined with um, COVID that at least we have some level of protection. That's right. And I went to see my own primary care physician, my own doctor the other day. I got my flu shot as well. And I'm just encouraging everybody like take the precaution right? Get the flu shot. And that's really what my, my intent is. Uh, as Dr. Monastor said, we know what we need to do, right? We need to wear the masks, wash the hands, no less, less, no less than 20 seconds, six feet or greater. Um, but one thing that I, I would love, um, Dr. Monastor, I'd love for you to explain to the viewers again, they hear the word contact tracing, mm. contact tracing. What, is, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, let's look at it this way. If I come here, in this room here, yes. with you, Mayor, yes. and let's say that I have, I don't have COVID, yes. but let's say that I have COVID, and somehow I, we do not use the proper precautions. We don't have, a, let's say we don't have our masks on. Yes, okay. yes. And so, I expose you. Now, you go home. Mm -hmm. You go to your family. Yes. I see my wife. I see my kids. Okay. okay. Yep. And you expose to them. I expose you to the virus. You don't know that. You take it home, and you may have two, three, four days. You don't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. You're asymptomatic. Yes. So you may say, okay, you haven't been places where you think you've been exposed. Now. You relate to your family members, and then a couple of days later also, somebody has, has a, a, a symptoms um, like, that looks like um, COVID. And by the way, you may not have any symptoms yet, while somebody who is exposed to you may start developing, sim developing symptoms. So which means that if you go to your doctor, or that person, that family member goes to the doctor, or go to a health center, they have to t tell, uh, to report that, because 
infectious disease is uh, are reportable by health departments yes. throughout the country. Yes. So that health department will have to find where you have been. Then they'll, in all the investigation, they'll probably get back all the way to me as yes. the source. Yes. So this is part of contact tracing to follow one case that has um, exposed other people. So at this point, they may say, okay, how many more people or where have I been? Mm. And so at this point, they're going to find, to try to find, to identify all my contacts. So they're connecting all the dots. All the dots, yes. So, so again, we, I've heard it. We all know what it means. It means exactly what it says, contact tracing. They're tracing the contacts. <laughs> so in Dr. Mondeso's example, uh, if he was in contact with me, they would reach out to me and whoever I was in contact with, and it's, it's a trickle down. Now, originally, the city of Brockton and Evelyn LeBron is the health nurse. Evelyn was pretty much doing it on her own. And then thanks to the Brockton Public School nurses, the nurses helped. And we were doing our own contact tracing. And then Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito reached out to me and they uh, provided services called, called um, Partners in Health. And Partners in Health would work with Evelyn and the school nurses to do contact tracing. And now we even have additional assistance, the CTC, which is um, the contact tracing connection, right, um, or collaboration. And again, we're all in this together. So the biggest thing is, if a resident in Brockton gets a call, what should they do? If they get a call from a contact tracer, what should they do? Well, they should cooperate. This is suggestions. They, I mean, they, they, they should cooperate because it's not, it does not violate um, the, the uh, privacy of an individual who is uh, who may have been exposed to COVID or another infectious disease because that's how we proceed to try to make sure that we can bring this um, virus or this uh, pandemic under control. Mm. So when a call is placed to a resident, they have to pick it up and then give work with the department to get that information. It's not, it's not a threatening call, but it's simply a call to make sure that uh, we doing our work, we're trying to make sure that we keep the residents healthy. And so therefore, the best thing everyone could do when they get a call like this is to remain on the phone until the, the uh, nurse or the health inspector or the health officer receive, collects all the information. And I think you said it, like cooperate, collaborate. Like we need to know that Brockton, our city, our city, that's why the show is called Our Brockton, it's all of ours, is healthy environment. And we've been really hurt. And we've been hurt emotionally, physically, mentally, financially uh, because of COVID and, and for other reasons. I mean, the murder of George Floyd. There's so many variables right now. Um, but with your leadership and your, your, your health experience, your pastoral clergy worshiping experience, your religious experience, there's a great connection. Um, what, what are some, I think, what are some suggestions, um, doctor, you would make to residents how they, they should live during COVID and then how should they operate after COVID, whenever that is? <laughs> it's a tough question. Yes, yes we're looking for that, 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 <laughs> that wall without COVID. But in the meantime, uh, first we have to work with the officials, with the health officials and elected officials, because in Massachusetts, I love this collaboration uh, from municipalities to all the way to uh, the governor's um, um, office, the um, elected, the other, um, the legislature. So everyone works together to address the issue. And so therefore, um, everyone who is connected to a place, let's say, for instance, a place of worship, uh, pastors, they have a certain way to uh, manage the facility so that when they meet, they know who's sitting where and how many people they have. And similarly, when people go out to, um, say, to the market or to any public place, to the bar, um, to the banks, they will see that on the door, most places uh, has a sign saying, no mask, no service. Mm -hmm. So which means that 
everyone must do this much. I know sometimes it's uh, annoying to be walking around with your face covered, but at least it protects everyone, it protects me to know that, okay, at least I am avoiding or I am preventing passing something on to someone else. Mm. And so therefore, we go through it together. Um, I wish I could tell you it will be over next month, but unfortunately, I don't think anyone has that answer yet. And so therefore, it's important to continue to look for the news, uh, to watch uh, if you're a resident at Grafton, to uh, connect with the city, with, with City Hall, uh, with the health department. Um, and when it starts going down, we'll continue to work with you to let you know how we're doing. But until then, we suggest that everyone works together with us and we will work with you in order to be able to help the city um, remain healthy. Absolutely, and that's what it's about, a healthy city um, and to really minimize the spread of this deadly virus. Now, again, I mentioned the curfew, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and a curfew is every single day. It's a mandatory curfew, just like these is mandatory wearing a mask, Governor Baker. Uh, as mayor, I had to take some um, options and orders that are in the best entrance and out of abundance of caution to the residents. So um, every day uh, at 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. there's a curfew. Now people have said to me, why didn't you do it until nine like you did before? Why did you push it back? And I'll, I'll tell you quite honestly, we were targeting, um, when we were in the red classification, there were a lot of house parties, a lot of house parties, a lot of gatherings in the backyard and in houses, also at a couple different playgrounds where there'd be a massive amount of people to get together. Now I like to get together with people, but not during COVID, not during coronavirus when you have over 280 deaths. So again, this curfew is, is to protect the safety. Now there's three playgrounds that were problems. Uh, the Edgar Playground on Dover Street, the Ash Street Playground, which is also known as Bent on Ash Street, and then the Nelson Field at South Middle School. People were going there, no masks, socializing, parties, cookouts. We just can't do that now. It's just not the time. So we're starting to see some really good progress. As I said, right, we're in yellow and we're going down. And eventually we want to get to green. But one thing that we've done, and as mayor, I chair the school committee, is that we have taken a vote as a school committee, myself and then the seven school committee members, one from each of the wards in the city of Brockton. And we've taken a vote that, again, we want to look at the, the three weeks to see where we are to make a determination. Right now, we're 100% remote. Um, and I want to applaud Dr. Mondesor, and I also want to give a shout out to Dr. Rick Herman, MD. Dr. Herman is our pandemic consultant for the city. Dr. Mondesor, Dr. Herman, myself, and Steve Hook, who's the director of BEMA, Brockton Emergency Management, every day we have a call at 1045. Dr. Herman and Dr. Mondesor have appeared at the school committee to give updates, the data, the metrics, the statistics, the numbers, where are we? And I wanna applaud you because I heard nothing but great comments. You also introduced yourself before the city council, Dr. Montessor. Um, what do the metrics and the data and the st statistics mean to you as the director of Board of Health? How important are they? Statistics helps us make decisions because Without st statistics, we're simply talking uh, without facts, mm -hmm. seemingly. Mm -hmm. But when you have numbers, uh, you can um, relate to the numerator or denominator. Maybe some people may forget what a denominator <laughs> yes. and numerator is. <laughs> so which means that when we have a number of people who may get sick, it helps to know how many people we have who are sick because it will also, not only it will help to determine the amount of resources that we need to care for those people, but it will tell us, okay, at what level we are. Are we at a pandemic? Is it an epidemic? Mm. Or what exactly uh, is going on? And so therefore the numbers are very significant and that is why, for instance, when you look at the numbers for Broughton, uh, the dash, we, we, Dr. Norm Herman called, calls it the dashboard and then we work with that every day. So you have different numbers. You have numbers of current cases uh, of COVID. Then you have total number of deaths. Uh, you have the, the um, rate 
or the number of people who get tested positive uh, daily uh, on over 100,000 inhabitants. So which means that, for instance, when we go to red, we call it eight people um, per day for 100,000. Now, some people may, may say, OK, eight cases per day. That is not that big. However, if that one person meets three people yes, daily, yes. those three people, each of them meets another three people. So that's already 12 people there, OK? And then that keeps spreading. So which means the numbers have significance to them. And so therefore, that is why we are interested in knowing every day, uh, every week, where we are, how many people are infected, and or how many people have uh, recovered, because that helps to know that whether or not we're making progress. Absolutely, you just summed it up perfectly. And uh, believe it or not, our time is almost up. It goes <laughs> by quick, but I also want to take the opportunity. So the way that the Board of Health operates in the city of Brock, and there's three members that are appointed by the mayor. Um, the three members that we have right now are, are Dr. Mary Brophy, MD, Dr. Craig Andrade, um, and also George Fisk, Mr. George Fisk. They were appointed by previous mayors to the Board of Health membership. Um, I want to thank them for their endeavors and their experience and their dedication. Um, when we were uh, interviewing, of course, Dr. Andrade, myself, Linda Cahill, and Sandra Knight, the Human Resource Director, were all unanimously in support of this gentleman right here. You, you, just, you just got a quick taste of who Dr. Mondeser is. He's, He's even keeled. He's professional. Uh, he dresses great as well. Uh, but he also, I'm you <laughs> <laughs> but he also is an experienced, dedicated health clinician that is helping us navigate the uncertainty of coronavirus. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking on such a, uh, an important job for the city of Brock, and I welcome you to the team. And I didn't know if there were any closing comments you wanted to share at this time. Well, I would like to say thank you also to the team at the uh, television station here who uh, graciously uh, entertained us. And also to the residents, I would say that our office is here to serve you 24-7. Um, if you call at one point, you don't get anybody, uh, you can leave your message and we will make sure that you get a call back. And so therefore, City Hall, Board of Health, that's for you. We are working for you. Dr. Monaso, thank you for your leadership at the Board of Health. Um, thank you for your dedication to the citizens of the city of Brock. And this is Mayor Robert Sullivan. You have just watched the sixth episode of Our Brock. And it's been my privilege and my honor to have Dr. Eno Montessor, who is our Executive Director of Board of Health, as my guest. I wish you all uh, a great, great uh, day. Uh, and also stay safe. Wear those masks, social, physical distancing. I'll be back soon with another esteemed guest, and I just want to tell you that it truly is an honor and a privilege to serve as your mayor of the city of Brock, and thank you very much. Be well. Mm -hmm.